In the past two months, we have set up and sold at four craft markets. Our total revenues from those four markets was $7,122. Now, this past weekend ended our season of selling, of setting up and selling. And so I thought it would be cool to look back at what worked, what didn't work, and ultimately, if it was worth our time by doing a complete cost breakdown. So first, I wanna give you a little context, a little background information on these four different events to kind of give you a scope of what they look like. So the first event we did was a fall market. It was local and it was the end of October. So this event was pretty small and it had an attendance of about 300 people. The second event we did was a Christmas market in the middle of November. And this one was a little larger. It had an attendance of roughly a thousand people, maybe a little bit more. The third and fourth events were the same exact events just held on back-to-back -back weekends. Now, these were two-day events held in the middle of December, and these were true Christmas markets. I never heard an estimate of the number of people that attended this, but based on the first two events, I'm estimating it was somewhere around 1,000 per day. These two events were also held at a brewery event space, and they had food, um, so it was a little more involved than the first two. So that gives you a little bit of an idea on the size of these events. None of them were 50,000 people, you know, giant state festivals or anything like that. So what worked and what didn't work? Well, let's start with what didn't work first. So the first thing that comes to mind that didn't work was we made this product. It was a pumpkin tray. We made two different sizes. We made uh, bigger ones and we made smaller ones. We made a total of 20 of these trays. Uh, for the fall event, for the first event, and we sold two of them, two of the small ones. And then we brought them to the other event that we did in the middle of November, right before Thanksgiving, thought they might sell, didn't sell any. So this product was a complete bust. So we tried different price points, we tried different presentation styles, tried a lot of different things. So what I think it was is that these products just weren't substantial enough. If these were an inch and a half thick, double the thickness, makes a bigger statement, I think they would have done better. But also, I don't know if pumpkins are where it's at. Maybe if I did a turkey, or maybe if I did a leaf, or maybe if I did something a little more unique than a pumpkin, we would have had more success here. Another product that I completely busted on were these beer flight boards. I came up with this product because we were going to a, a brewery event space, and there I knew there was gonna be a lot of beer drinkers there, and I figured it would be a unique gift for the guy that's hard to buy for. But I only sold one. I made 12 of them and I only sold one. Uh, we tried with the glasses, without the glasses, to include the glasses. We tried a couple different price points. I don't have any idea of why, like what to do, what I could have done better, maybe a more unique design. I don't know. But this product was a complete bust. Even though I made a product for a specific person in mind, I just didn't connect and didn't sell. The third thing that did not go well, and I'm going to preface this with, this kind of makes me look silly and I have no idea where it came from. But anyways, when someone asks you how much something is, we had everything priced, but some people just don't see those and they just rather ask. So when someone says, hey, how much is this? For some reason, I started out saying, we have $25 on them today. Why I included the today, I have no idea. I honestly do not have an explanation for it. Um, I did that for first, the first couple hours and my wife was like, hey, you probably should stop saying today because that, mis that leads people to think that they're gonna be a different price tomorrow. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And I, and I still slipped up one more time and I said, oh, those are $40 today. And the lady, the customer looked at me and she's like, today? what are they gonna be tomorrow? And I'm like, I looked at my wife and I'm like, ugh, and she walked away. Uh, the, the customer walked away. But regardless, I don't know where that came from. It's not a good strategy. It was just, I think maybe a little anxiety and I, that's just what came out. But I quickly changed that and I would just give a more direct answer. So this is a great lesson though. Your words matter to your customers. One time my wife described the lights in our lanterns. This was at the very beginning, our first show and she described the lights and she was, someone was like, well, what if I didn't want a different color of lights? My wife was like, well, you can just rip them out and, and shove new ones in there. And so when that, when that customer walked away, I said, hey, probably not a good idea to use words like rip and shove. 
maybe we're being petty there, but it just sounds a little violent when you're talking about your product. And uh, so your words matter when you are talking to your customer. So those were the main things that were just complete bust. There was other things that didn't work as well, but those uh, were the things that just completely busted and did not go well at all. But let's look at the things that did go well. Something that is really important that we try to do when we are at these events is engaging customers in authentic conversations. We came a lot across a lot of people that were from the same area that we were in, that knew the area that we grew up in, um, but just making that connection, that human connection is extremely important when you um, are at these events. The second thing is having unique products. You really want the customer to be like, wow, I haven't seen that before. Now, this is what helped us get into the last event that was somewhat competitive to get into and um, because we have wooden lanterns. No one else sells wooden lanterns. So these event organizers are looking uh, for vendors that have unique products because they know the people coming are looking for unique, one-of-a-kind um, items. So our wooden lanterns are the unique product that no one else has uh, that does really, really well for us. The third thing is an absolute no-brainer and is that is taking credit cards. We took in $5,247 in credit cards and it's just an absolute must in today's day and age. We use Square and Square charges us like $148 to process all of that money, which is an absolute steal. And so it's a no-brainer. Sign up for Square, get the card reader. They're, they have different card readers and it's just a no-brainer, something that you have to offer your customers. The fourth thing that worked really well for us is our lantern pricing strategy. We offered one lantern for $30 or two for 50. Now this is fantastic on this price point because a lot of people just want one for themselves, which is completely fine. But if they wanna buy for someone else, one for them or one for someone else, it's only $20 more. The second lantern's only $20 more. So we sold a lot of two sets of lanterns for $50. And so they're getting them for $25 a piece. Pricing strategy worked excellent for us. Something else with price points that worked well for us is having smaller items. We sold over 40 of these DIY gingerbread houses for $10 a piece. Now, if someone doesn't want a bigger item, um, something that is small, something that is unique, cute for the kids, uh, it's really powerful to have that smaller item. We brought in over $400 in revenue just from a $10 item. The last thing that went really well for us is making friends with other vendors. Now, I know some people don't view that this way. They look at other vendors as uh, competition and they sit there and they don't talk to anybody the whole time. If you don't see the benefit in networking and collaborating, you are extremely, extremely missing out. And it is ex very important to do is how can I help other people be successful? And if they have that same in return, you can go so much further than just trying to go at it by yourself. So made some fantastic relationships through all these events and um, ones that we will continue to help each other out, continue to help each other be successful. And that is a beautiful thing. So take advantage of that. Before we break down the numbers to see if this was worth our time or not, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. PCB Way is your one stop for all your PCB, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal, services, they do it all. Offering instant quotes, quick turnaround, and fast shipping, PCB Way is a great resource to have for your next project. So if you would like to incorporate electronics into your next project, or you need a rapid prototype yourself, look no further than PCB Way. So were these four events worth our time? Let's break down all of our costs. Fuel costs were $125. Sales tax is our revenue times 0 0.06 equals $427. We had some costs for food because we were at these events and I guess we could have packed a lunch or something like that, but we did have some food cost of $100. Between the time we spent at the event, uh, the time driving to and from, and setting up and tearing down, we had about 53 hours invested into these four events. So we'll use that number here in a second. But when you subtract all of our costs from our revenues, 
that equals $6,470. But that number does not include our product cost. But I know that we have about a 75% profit margin across all of our products. So what we can do is we can take that $6,470 number, times that by 0.75, and that equals $4,852.50. This number is our net profit. Now, the one thing that we haven't taken into account is the 53 hours it took us to perform these events, to set up, tear down, travel, and the time at the events. So if we take our net profit number and divide that by 53, that number is 91.56. So this means we made $91.56 per hour setting up and going to these events. But that's not all. What this $91 an hour doesn't factor in is the number of business cards that we handed out to individuals. It doesn't include the direct product feedback we got from actual customers, which is extremely valuable. It doesn't include that. And it also doesn't include the other business owners that came up to us and wanted to collaborate on future projects. It also doesn't include the new friends that we made with other vendors, people that are trying to do the exact same thing as us. But maybe my favorite part of all is having real conversations with people that have nothing to do with a sale or a product. It's really easy to get wrapped up in the numbers alone, but it's really neat to meet different people and to share stories and to connect with them. You never know whose path you'll cross and what kind of impact that can have on you or can have on them. To say the least, these four events were well worth our time. A big thank you to my wife. Literally, this doing these events would not be possible without her. So thank you to her. Also, a big thank you to all of our customers for supporting our small business. Overall, success starts with being selective with the events that you are going to attend. But there's no way around it. There is some risk anytime you're trying to sell the things that you make. No matter what avenue you pick, there is some risk. But there's also things in your control that you can do to limit that risk. So the things I shared about what didn't go well and what did go well, focus on those things because those things are the things that are in our control. If you found this video insightful, check this one out right here. Uh, where I go over the very first fall market that we did and do a complete breakdown in that one as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in that video. Thanks, bye.